Well, folks, the calendar says it's spring. Kind of feels like it a little bit, <laughs> but it doesn't look like it. Still quite a bit of snow in the woods here. But the spring project is underway. You heard me talk about putting up a garage. Never got to it last year. We're over here on the 10 acre lot. This is where the garage is gonna go. I'll show you what we got going on. So what I got going on here is I'm clearing out a spot for the garage. And when the snow goes away and the ground thaws out a bit, I'll rent an excavator, get all the stumps pulled. And then I'm going to build a floor system for a 24 by 24 building. It's going to be up on piers. There's a company here close by that does prefab garages and they're pretty affordable. And I really don't feel like taking the time to frame it up. I'd rather use my, my time on other things. So I'll probably hire them to put the shell up. I don't want it on a concrete pad because I really don't need a garage that I'm going to be driving vehicles in. The vehicles can stay outside. My vehicles don't need to be in a building. But I do want a building so I can have it as a workshop and pull the ATVs in there whenever I need to. So I'm going to have it up on, on piers. One part of it has a garage door so I can access my workshop, bring the machines in whenever I want to work on them. The other part's going to be living space, so is the upstairs, and that's going to be a little apartment. May rent it out, may not. It's just a plan B that we'll have in place in case something happens to me with my medical issues. I've got a surgery coming up on April 4th, and I've got another one coming up a little bit further in the future. I want to make sure that we have a plan B in place in case things go south. Lori's not going to live up on the mountain by herself, and I don't want to be a burden to anyone if something happens to me. I don't want to leave all this stuff to take care of. I'm going to get an apartment in place. If we don't need it, we can rent it out. If we ever need it, it'll be there. Might start up the food business again, then use the apartment for that. Now all of those cuttings were level with the snow, so the snow has come down about maybe eight inches since we started. Getting all the brush in piles with all the butt ends facing one way, another pile over here, then I kindle a fire and I pull it in and it burns up nicely. Yeah. So the road is that way, oh probably 60 yards or so. And we got a driveway that's coming in here. Then it's going to go way back and eventually probably have a cabin in the back. But for now, this is where the garage is going to go. I've got a lot more trees to cut. I want to get all this stuff out of the way. Well, we've got a nice stack of firewood right there. Those are all four footers. Good batch of wood for the future. And another stack right there. There's going to be a lot more. There's quite a bit more to cut. Yep. Got a good start on it. Yeah, so that's what we got going on. So, I'm going to take advantage of the mild temps today. We got some rain coming a little later. I'm going to drop a few more trees, get the firewood in a stack on four foot lengths, get all the brush ready to burn, and go home and take a nap. <laughs> When we were at the dump, I found some more luggage. I wasn't going to take this one. This one shows a little bit more wear and tear, just some discoloration. But there's no holes in it. All the zippers work. Got all these pouches here, pouches in here. So I can put my hats and my gloves and other camouflage and whatnot in it all in one spot. Then I can use the totes underneath the cabin for other things. And the mice and moisture doesn't bother it. But 
I found some flannel shirts. Just some cabin shirts, you know. I'll probably bring these to the other cabin. <laughs> and look at the color. <laughs> Perfect. And Mama got another pair of pants. <laughs> so this is working out better than I thought. When I first saw this piece of luggage, I wasn't going to take it because it looked kind of beat up on the outside. But I opened it up. It was flawless on the inside. Figured I'd give it a try. It's working out great. So inside, I've got all my hunting clothing there. And then in the cover, I have a pouch for all my gloves and mittens. Pouch for hunting hats. Then here, I have a pouch I haven't used yet. Which I'm probably just going to put in some, maybe some rain gear or something. And then a pouch here with, you know, fold-up saw, flagging, compasses, hunting knives, stuff like that. Now in the past, I had all my hunting clothing in the tote, which worked out fine. But then I have all this loose stuff that was kept in something else. Sometimes they get separated. This thing works out good. I have everything in one spot. I'm going to head to New York hunting, throw this in the truck, everything's together. Yeah. Just love our dump, man. This is fantastic. This is going to work out really good. Well, there you go. A little Frankie montage for you all. You guys have been busting my balls about the Frankie footage, so put together that little compilation for you. Yeah. Oh, we got Tildy right here. She wants a, she wants a Tildy montage. <laughs> Come on, let me finish the video. Get down, you crazy pup. 
Okay, I'm going to answer just a few questions here and wrap it up for this week. All right, here we go. You never told us how Tildy got her name. What is the significance behind that? Okay, when I was a kid, well, all growing up, this camp was named Tildy's Symposium. That was a name that my dad come up with for reasons of his own. To say that I never liked the name is an understatement, because <laughs> I hated it. But here's a photo of me repainting the sign for my dad, wishing that I was painting something else on it. <laughs> so, later in life, I took the sign down. We haven't really renamed the camp yet, but we might. So, Tildy is named after the Tildy camp. She thinks it's Tildy's camp. Yeah, she's all proud of that. <laughs> Here she comes again. Ah, uh, yeah, Tildy's camp, I know. Do you ever get unexpected visitors at the cabin? Ah, uh, yes and no. People drop by occasionally, but most of them uh, respect our privacy and arrange a visit beforehand. The unexpected folks are, well, we're the only people living up here on the mountain, okay? So when somebody gets stuck or they crash their snowmobile or something like that, they come to us for help, and we're happy to help them. Yep, became friends with a gentleman last winter when he had his side-by-side -side stuck quite a ways from here. He walked a long ways, showed up at the cabin, we got on the snowmobile, brought the come along cables, got him out, made a good friendship with him, had some snowmobiles. From time to time, you know, they run into a tree or something happens and we help them out. Just had some folks out here the other day. Yeah, but like I said, most people respect our privacy and, and arrange a visit beforehand and I like it that way. In last week's video, lots of comments on my old Chevy. Questions about that? Most people pegged it as a 72, and they were right. That was a 72 Blazer. They don't make them like that anymore. That was a fantastic rig. I would love to have one of those all restored. That was a great rig. Questions about that axe that I showed you. A lot of people were under the assumption that Bill, the guy that sent it to me, made it. No, he did not make it. That was a gift from him. If you want to learn more about those axes, right here on YouTube, look up Bear Axe. Bear Axe, not Bear Ass, because who the heck knows what you're going to find you start looking up that stuff. Bear Axe. Engraving, bear axe, carving, something like that, you'll find the gentleman that puts these things together. Like I said, even the engraving, all those engravings in the axe head, in the steel, were done by hand. It wasn't laser etched or done with acid or nothing. Fantastic. What a gift. What a gift. Okay, do I still have the wooden barrel, the barrel that I bought those axe handles in? I don't have the barrel anymore. I, I, when I sold my cabin to take off and go traveling to Alaska and all of that, I probably gave the barrel away to somebody because I was downsizing. So everything I owned at that point was in my Toyota truck when we hit the high country. Yeah. I wish I did still have it, though. Okay. Ah, do I have any more on here? No, I guess that is it. So... Like I said in the beginning of this video, I have surgery coming up uh, on April 4th, so I doubt that there will be a video next week. We'll see. The MRI was looking pretty good, though, so it shouldn't be too extensive. Hopefully. We'll see how it goes. Yep. So I'm going to wrap it up. All the best to you. We'll see you probably in two weeks. God bless. Frank and the boss out of walking in the woods Living life happy and free Tracks in the snow everywhere they go There's a pokey way up in that tree
A beaver built a pond where they have some fun Taking life a day at a time Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss